Welcome to the Freelance Thrive. You will talk with skilled freelancers about their professional journey. Stay tuned for real life experiences to learn and actionable steps to take to improve your freelancing career. My name is Yuri. I'm community builder at Code Control and 9am.works. And my guest is Balaj Hussein, a freelance product manager and consultant, founder of the Planning to Epic Works, and the host of two podcasts. Epic Works about technology product management and entrepreneurship and inspired in Berlin about using a growth mindset to make people's and the planet's lives better. So welcome, Balaj. Thank you for inviting me, Yuri. Pleasure to be here. Super happy to finally have one more conversation with you. And it's a podcast about podcasting. So since you're running two podcasts, tell me please, how did you start your podcasting journey? So my podcasting journey started about a year and three months ago. This was December of um, 2021. Um, and me and my wife, we were in Barcelona and we caught COVID. So we okay. ended up sitting inside our um, Airbnb. And I'd been thinking about starting podcasting and had tried with a couple of friends. But in that moment, it was, okay, let's just start. And I sat and recorded the first two episodes. Those were solo episodes. Uh, and everything since has been guests. Um, and that's how it started in a moment of nothing else to do. <laughs> let's do this thing that I've wanted to do for over a year. And why did you, why did you want to start it? I think this is a sentiment that is common for, for you, for me, for most podcasters. One is to, to share what I am learning. Um, but much bigger than that is to learn from other people, which is why I do guest pod podcasts. Because there's, there's always a perspective, even if it is a topic that you're so deeply interested in, and I'm interested in many topics, but it's just fascinating to get somebody else's perspective. And then the third part that is very important for me is to um, to give voice to some of the topics and ideas that that I care about, where maybe I'm not the expert, maybe even my guest is not the expert, but we care about it. So, for example, sustainability. I just did a series of episodes on sustainability with a friend. Neither of us are experts, but we care. Uh, and you will see in those episodes that our naivety and lack of understanding comes through, which is perhaps representative of a lot of people who care but don't know. So to give voice to, to those topics, I think, is the most important part of it and learning from others. How do you decide who to invite as a guest? So for me, there's um, there's a simple process. Um, the way I decide is um, I have the the general space of topics that I'm interested in, mm -hmm. um, and then I look for people from my network. Um, and then what I choose based on is if I know somebody is a good storyteller. Um, so if I know somebody, that's the best thing because I realize um, theory only goes so far. Stories are much more relatable. So I would almost always prioritize storytellers over um, deep scientists, although I love deep scientists and <laughs> I would happily go um, into nerdy conversations with them. Um, but then the other part of it uh, is that the guests recommend other people. So that's where it's open-ended and I don't try to add any filters. I trust the guest's judgment and what other friends recommend. So those are the two sources of where where people um, show up on the podcast as guests. And do you always speak to somebody you know or your friends know, or sometimes you reach out to like some people you don't know, like how it works for you? I think for me, if you look at the list of guests, it's been around, I'd say 60, 40. So 60% have been people that, that I know somehow. Either I know them or I've seen them work in a different context or they were in a parallel team at a past employer or it's people that I follow on LinkedIn. And then 40% is people that I just got to know because of the recommendations or completely kind of new new people who showed up on my horizon. So, um, so that's kind of 60-40. Mm -hmm. And I think as more guests come onto the podcast, there's a higher number of new people coming up because um, I run out of people that I can personally invite. And did you receive many no's if, when you invite people to the podcast? Only a handful. And to be honest, it was 
actually some of the handful of the people who have been on the podcast required a bit of encouragement. And the ones that said no was, um, I think there were only two who were too busy and, and then a handful who just thought they didn't want to, they, they couldn't, um, and I couldn't encourage them enough to, <laughs> to come to the podcast, but it's, it's a very small percentage. How do you prepare for the conversation? For me, when I started, I was really trying to, um, since I asked the guests for their intro, I, I then really try to think of what might be the topics that are interesting within that. Um, and, and I would prepare a lot of sticky notes. So if you had seen me recording the first couple of episodes, I had sticky notes literally all around my uh, <laughs> laptop. And, and over time that has reduced. So I get better at um, having important topics and then letting the conversation flow. Sometimes you think that this might top this topic might take one one minute, but the guest has a lot of stories, and then a whole new line of conversation starts from that. So, so I try to essentially cover all the topics that the guests want to cover, mm -hmm. and blend in the topics that I want to cover. Um, but I'm leaning more and more towards conversation than interviews. So. Basically, you prepare some initial set of questions mm -hmm. and then just listen closely and ask him like follow up questions. Better said, <laughs> better said <laughs> than I could have. <laughs> Did you ever have this feeling when you have no follow up questions? I think perhaps maybe once or twice, but but there's always something and then then we just continue right i think i have had to definitely have had to get over the awkwardness of that yeah um because you 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 feel as if you have to fill the gaps um but if you give it a few seconds something comes up and you know i i pretty sure i've said a couple of times um this was great let's switch gears too because you know the <laughs> the conversation or that part of conversation is really over. It's been well explained and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, you reminded me, I listened to some uh, experienced podcaster and they told that when they have a conversation and they have kind of awkward pause, it's, it's super important to wait a little because, you know, guests feel like they need to tell something more. Yeah. And in this moment, they're telling like the best gems ever. Mm -hmm. so, but it's so hard when you have this pause. It's like, should I say something? Should I ask something? Or should I wait? Like, it's, yeah, it's for me personally, it's super hard to understand, like, what is, how to deal with it. So, yeah, I totally understand you. And you told that you have sometimes storytellers, most of them storytellers, and some, let's say, geeks. So, mm -hmm. What is the difference for you as the host in those in having those conversations with storytellers and geeks? Well, as you can imagine, storytellers um, tell stories, right? And <laughs> yes. they have a lot of stories to tell. So most of my episodes run an hour, hour and a half at, at most, and that's why I cut it. But I always have the feeling we could go on for four hours. Um, <laughs> so, so there's definitely no shortage of content. But with uh, with experts or with geeks, I think the challenge for me is, uh, in a way, what you just did two questions ago, where the expert is in that space and they're they're telling you about twenty different aspects, and it's been three minutes, um, and then they're done, and you as the host then summarize that in ten words that everybody <laughs> can relate to, um, and that's where and I and I do that um, because I think. The whole point is to make sure that that message gets across, right? And if you feel the need to rephrase, that's okay. Um, the challenge there is to make sure that you don't add too many words of your own um, or convert it into your own perspective, kind of preserve what the person was trying to say and still continue the conversation. Because I, I know a lot of experts and oftentimes they're experts because they've really focused in on their craft or the topics, not necessarily on telling a story about that. So that's the job of the host to kind of round it off without uh, diluting the message. Yeah. Yeah. I totally feel that. And I feel like it's the hardest part 
Mm-hmm. Because, you know, when you're having this conversation with somebody, you always want to share your thoughts. You always want to, you know, but it's hard to listen to the guest. And do you have this fight inside of you? Like, should I say something or should I ask a question? Um, not so much, but I'm I'm exploring this space. So w- one of the new developments for me is I just recorded a podcast episode two days ago mm-hmm. um and it's it's on a topic of self-development talking about attention it's a topic that i'm very much interested in and i've done a bunch of things but the person sitting across me has 25 years of experience mine is just five right <laughs> um so what i noticed was that now i'm finally in a space where i can listen i notice the thoughts coming up but i can put them aside with the trust that if they are important, they will come up naturally. Mm. Um, and what what was very interesting in this one in particular was that then I had images that were popping up. So when that episode comes out, you might notice that I said this four or five times. So I was like, you know what, um, based on what you said, the image that comes to my mind <laughs> is, and then the conversation continues. So um, I think the... The struggle has completely changed. In the beginning, there was this, um, like any beginner, there was the feeling of, I I must make sure that all the topics are covered Mm -hmm. um, and somehow fit in the questions. And now it's, it really is a conversation. It's okay if I miss certain things. So I don't try to keep it in my mind as thoughts come up. And then it makes it easier to, to listen to the other person and keep it going rather than controlling it. Yeah, I I, f- I feel I can totally relate to what you are saying because I always wanted, you know, sometimes to write them down or to keep them remembering. But what I noticed is that it's like keep you unfocused. Yeah. So if you are holding these questions in your mind, that you now conversation sucks at this point. So what is the difference for you between record in the first episode and the latest episode? I think in the latest episode, I'm a lot more focused, a lot more relaxed person. Um, And there's no, there's no pressure. And I think the guests feel it too. Um, Whereas in the first one, it really was, I have 20 sticky notes. I love this person. I want to make sure that they have a good time. You know, it's, uh, it's performance anxiety. It's like being on a first date and uh, you want to make sure, make a really good, great impression. And then you knock the wine bottle over and, you know, the, you drop a bit of food on your shirt. Um, and, um, and it's kind of um, funny and cute, but awkward. Um, whereas with the latest episode, for sure, it's, it's about the conversation that kind of self-consciousness is, is out of the way. It's about the message, accepting that, yes, from time to time, I will screw it up. I will say the wrong words. Um, I will, you know, knock the microphone and there might be a noise in the background. It's it's okay. Um, and that, I think, completely changes the, the dynamic and the feeling. It's definitely much more how I imagined it to be in the beginning. Uh, that's where I'm getting to now. Um, but it's this process. How has it been for you? Yeah, very much the same. So I was worrying about having a lot of questions. I was worrying about always keeping this conversation. I was worrying that guests have a great time mm-hmm. because, you know, I'm recording podcasts in English and it's not my native language. And I always worry, like, if they understand me correctly, mm-hmm. if it's like, if I understand them correctly, because I still, till these days, I still have this feeling that sometimes I just don't understand what some people are saying, but Mm -hmm. I have the whole picture out of the context. Yeah. Because, you know, I, I I don't, do not know every English word. So yeah, but totally I can relate to what you are saying much more confidence, much more experience of how the conversation might go. And it's always about curiosity Mm -hmm. because what I tried before is to prepare a list of questions, but Mm -hmm. what I'm trying now to be, more genuinely curious and even yeah. if i'm running out of questions like i'm just asking this person what i what i want to know mm-hmm. so that's what helps me a lot to have conversations with people and i love having conversation even now i'm learning a lot from you so <laughs> please keep keep sharing your experience keep doing it and i wanted to ask you like 
what is your perfect timing for a podcast? Like it's 30 minutes, one hour, like 15 minutes. Did you have, did you um, research on it? I did. I did a bit of research. And then, um, of course, there's, there's content and there's justifications for all sorts of things. So um, what I settled on was initially in my debrief, I tell the guests that it's going to be <clears throat> something around 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And it can go up to one hour, uh, one second. <clears throat> what what ended up happening was that almost all the conversations um, went to about an hour mark and some of them went to one and a half. And like I said, um, with most of them, I have the feeling that we could have gone on for like four hours. Um, so to be honest now, personally, I don't care. Um, if the guests have time, we go as long as needed. I give myself a lot of time. Usually I don't re- uh, schedule any meetings or any other things around podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, but it tends to be between an hour and a, and a half. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's okay. Um, cause also then it gives, leaves an opportunity for another conversation another time. And, yeah. um, usually you need a break around that time as well. So I'm I'm happy with one hour mark. You know, I, I would love to ask you about your tech setup and applications you use, but I will ask you later and then just add it to notes. Mm-hmm. And for now, what are three first steps for someone who wants to start podcasting from your experience? Very simple. Create a, an account with... Um, Spotify for podcasters, what used to be called anchor.fm yeah. because it's the simplest way to distribute your podcast to, to many different channels to record. And you can record with anchor.fm. Um, they have all the tools. It runs in the browser, super easy and publish number three. <laughs> you have a podcast, you have an episode out there. You have links that you can share with people. You can get feedback. That's all that is important. Um, because the moment you will do that first episode, you will know all the ways you're doing it wrong, all the ways <laughs> you could improve it, everything that didn't work. Um, but you would not have the limitations of keeping it in your mind. It's, it's out of your system. So record and distribute. That's it. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah, you know, Valach, I wish to have the sky as a limit, but time is a limit to our conversation. So the final question, what is your favorite food? Oof, um, difficult. I love <laughs> vegetarian food. I'm a vegetarian. Uh, and right now, if I had to choose one, I think tonight I'm going to have um, this Roman style pizza from around the corner. And that's my favorite food of the moment. Got it. Thank you so much for sharing your experience, Balaj. And it's been such a pleasure to hear and learn from you. The pleasure is shared, my friend. (laughs) And thank you so much for listening. If you like the show, hit the like button or five stars and share it with your friend. That's it. We're done. See you in the next episode.